San Angelo Civic Events. It is 11.01. The board takes public comment on all items on the regular agenda. Public input on a regular agenda item will be taken at an appropriate discussion. Public input on an item on the agenda or consent agenda may be identified and requested for consideration by the board at this time. The board may request an item be placed on a future agenda or for a consent agenda item to be moved to the regular agenda for public comment. Do we have any public comment? If not, let's move forward to the consent agenda. Consideration of, appro of approving the February 23rd, 2017 meeting minutes. Has everybody had time to review those? A motion. We have a first, I have a second. I'll second. Any, any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say no. Consent agenda item passes. Uh, we're on the regular agenda, we're going to move um, number five. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, number four, review of civic events bylaws and recommendation, recommending any amendments to number two or the first item on the regular agenda. Yes, sir. Thank you. Did you remove anything from up here? I'm sorry? I had a. I did I, not, I did I not move something. anything from there, sir. That was my packet. So we're going to start off with the the civic the review of the civic event bylaws. Of course, in February we did we all met to discuss uh, the bylaws that we had in place and uh, the determination from that. You all wanted me to go back and get legal's uh, legal side and see what they come up with. So I was able to get Miss Teresa James to uh, um, to give us some guidance. And one of the things that we do have um, is. A per code of ordinance that would need to be changed on a, on a few of the uh, on a few of the articles or in a few of the sections. I apologize, but let's go ahead and just start with what changes we've already made, just to review those first, and then we'll go from there. So first, we'll start off with the vision statement. We did add in, uh, of course, we talked about the vision statement to be prefer to be the preferred host for entertainment, business, and community events in West Texas, and then the mission statement is to enhance the quality of life for, of our citizens and business partners by providing quality events and facilities in a clean, comfortable, and safe environment. Now, one of the, uh, one of the changes that we did have to make, if you go to Article 2, Members of the Board, in Section 3, the qualifications, and this is one of them that is per code of ordinance that's already in place, board members shall have such qualifications as prescribed by the City Council. All members must be of voting age instead of that it says 21 years 21 years of age and a resident of the city of san angelo <laughs> and uh the next one section four term of office i think that we had talked about putting it down as january 1st but due to the uh, code of ordinance it it uh, would have to stay as october 1 unless we change the code if you go to section, and I'm skipping down to section five, the quorum, um, at least, I know we have put down a quorum of at least four members is necessary to conduct any board meeting, but I'm, they are saying that we're, we're gonna need five due to the code. <clears throat> and then for the section seven, the termination of board members any board member who has missed three, uh, missed four unexcused meetings in a calendar year because of personal or family illness, family emergency, funerals or employment, or who misses four meetings total in a calendar year, sh year shall be deemed to have resigned and the board shall immediately notify the city council that a vacancy exists. So it's four uh, per ordinance. And for us to make any of these changes, of course, we would have to bring that to city council um, for, for the ordinance to be changed. There will be two readings, and then that change could be made for us to have those in our bylaws. All right. <clears throat> so basically, I, I, I need direction from you all if you all would like to um, change the ordinance or bring it to council for change of the ordinance or, you know, just any, what is y'all's feedback? 
Let me start on Article 2. So, so the the board or city council did at some point change where they were going from eight to seven, I would assume. That's because we're only seven. But but at that time, the quorum, the quorum numbers did not change per ordinance, so we're going to have to send it to to council, correct? Okay. So when we go, when we present it then, some of the things that we talked about, I don't remember the 21 years of age. Right now, per ordinance, Someone to serve on here, it has to be 21 years of yes, age, sir. is that correct? <coughs> is that okay with everybody? Leaving it, or y'all want to strike that in 18? That's the okay. Well, we're fixing to take the ordinance. If we're going to make any changes, we need to go ahead and make those recommendations today. I think they should be a voting age to be eligible. I'm going to agree, because we do have younger people doing different things within city management so mm -hmm. if you can vote to put the city manager there you should or the city heads of the city in place then you right. should be able to serve on a board we want to change that to 18 then or voting age a voting, voting age, age. Just say voting age. <laughs> the next one would be the october 1st we're going to Ask that that be changed to January 1st, is that correct? I think that's what we agree on since we kind of started in January this year. And of course, a quorum with us just being seven, four would be a better number to get a quorum. You all agree with that? I agree. And then, am I reading this right? So we're going to change any board member who has missed three unexcused meetings in a calendar year or, yes, or four total? Yes, That's sir. what we discussed before, correct? That's what we discussed. To me, that's not a... That's not a big uh, That one or the, uh, the quorum and the voting age is what's big to me. The other ones are... Okay. I don't think they're that big of a deal. If we're asking, we might as well ask. Might as well ask. Anybody have any other changes they want to discuss? So do we have to have four or five? Right now we have to have five per ordinance. We're, we're going to be taking it to, 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 four to four because we used to have eight board members. That's why it was five, but now we only have seven. So five is a little bit harder to get a quorum. The other one, as far as whether the, the term starts October or January, is the other one I'm talking about. Not a deal breaker. Well, I'd like to go with January, if that's okay with everybody. Anything else? Do I hear a motion to, um, to approve the changes in the bylaws? So, Mr. Mr. Well, it wouldn't be the change in bylaws, it would be. We'll send it to ordinance. Yes. Okay. I'll make a motion that we request the change of the ordinance to go with our our preferences that we have discussed. Second. Any any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. Wait, wait, wait. Aye. So, for clarification, change the ordinance based on what we see here. That in the is, packet proposed. That is correct. Okay. The, the packet that we and and the changes that we just discussed. So, I'll be bringing this to City Council to second meeting in second council meeting in May. This will have to take two readings, so that'll push us into June. So by the time we have our June board meeting, we should be ready to go with our. Just to ask a late question. Is there uh, any requirement in the bylaws that state that you have to have a certain amount of meetings a year? How many meetings can? I, I, don't, I don't think it's in the bylaws, but I think it's in um, it does state the directive that was given to us. Was it in the bylaws? Bylaws do state one regular meeting each month. Okay. Yes. You may meet at other times if you call me. We can't meet additional times if we if we need to. <clears throat> we do need to look at, I guess, on meetings. I'm I'm catching it right now. Section one, regular meetings. The board shall hold one regular meeting each month. The meeting shall be shall normally be held at noon on the last Thursday each month. We normally have have ours at 11 a.m. Um, you could take that out and just set a time 
regular time. Yeah, the time. Just take out the time. If it's at a specified. Because we haven't met in noon for 10 years, I think. <clears throat> All right. So I'll add that to my motion that we take. Okay. We take that and change it to a preset specified time or whatever the wording may be. And I'll second that as well. All right, any further discussion? All right, all in favor of sending that to ordinance as we discussed, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. I think at this point, Karen, you need to excuse yourself. Is yes, that and I apologize, but thank you very much. All right, well, thank you for staying, okay? Thank you. All right. All right, go, going back now to presentation of the monthly financial reports and event calendar. Who, who's going to go first? Don? Morning, board. How are y'all? Morning. I'm Don Maynard. I'm a civic events business finance analyst. And I have a couple of things I want to uh, mention to y'all. Uh, I think you'll be pleased with one of them in particular. And uh, as, as you notice here, our fund balance is a little over $2 million. But that's a fund balance for not only civic events, but also for the uh, hotel occupancy tax money. Um, as you can see, if you look at your, your March <coughs> statement, the very top, it leads, starts off with hotel motel, and it gives the revenue, and then it shows all of the expenditures that are currently being transferred out of our civic events fund to these other departments uh, because of the the uh, amount of money that they're to receive each month. And I was informed a couple of weeks ago, and Carl mentioned this in our department meeting we had earlier this week, that the finance department is considering and probably will have in place, if not before the new physical, if, if not on the physical year starting October 1st, they hope to have it done by August or September, where they'll move hotel occupancy tax to its own separate fund, which is something that I think a lot of people have been wanting to do for a number of years. This way, then when we see these reports after that is done, it'll be true fund 410 balances. Good. And we won't have these transfers going out and we won't have this top portion. I don't know exactly how they will reformat this, but it will be strictly civic events which would be a good thing and a good thing for y'all because you know exactly where we stand. Right. So um, that's something to look forward to. I'm kind of glad to hear it because it'll make my job much easier. Uh, also, it, uh, uh, I think the fund balance would be much more true because we don't really know how much of that that we really have access to. And then there's a couple of things that are coming up uh, in the next few weeks. One. Next Monday, we'll start on our expense budget for fiscal year 18 that will have to be completed by May 15th. And in that, we go in and detail out all of our different expense accounts as to what we think we need in order to operate. Now, this is strictly for the operations part of the budget, but we will also be looking at our capital expenditures or, or needs and requirements, as well as any... Uh, additional personnel or so forth that we might might need. But this um, uh, budget preparation is uh, kind of a, a tense situation at this time of the year because we will get our target. And the tar by target, what I mean by that is the budget department would tell us after they take out payroll and certain things that, that we can't touch, we being a person like me, an analyst, I, I'm not allowed to touch that then they tell me how much I have to spend, and then I'll have to spread that over all the accounts and the venues that we have. And sometimes that, that gets a little nerve-wracking because, and as in most cases, you don't have enough money for doing everything you want to do. But we'll be doing that, and we'll have that finished on the 15th. And then, of course, the budget department will then begin their process of, we've already done revenue, they'll begin their process of uh, finalizing the reports and meet and in accordance with state law they have certain deadlines that they have to meet every uh, every month in order to finalize the budget in September for the coming year physical year 18. So I just wanted to mention that to y'all 
if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask or, or send me an email. And when you look at the, any of these figures and you see something on there that you just have a question about, just send me an email and I'll respond as quickly as possible. We, we appreciate that. We I have a question. If they separate the accounts and occupancy dollars are just in their own little account, who will get those reports as far as what that account balance is? Will it still show up? Yes, sir. It, yes, sir, it will show up. Are you we'll talking just see about it as a, a separate account. We'll see 410 and then we'll see something else for. Or will we see the 410? Well, you, you'll see this report. This is what they call the Blue Book report. Mm -hmm. If you want something more detailed, I can run you a revenue and expenditures report that details what the budget is, how much we spent, how much we have left by venue. Yeah, by I'm account. just thinking. So if they, if Civic Events has its own bank account that will get money from the 410 balance, I mean, because all I mean, from, occupancy dollars will go into 410, right? Well, yeah, then, when, when they create the new fund for the uh, hotel occupancy tax, then we will get some transfer of funds, whatever our portion is for what they have, and it'll be put into our account. From oh. that other account. So who's... Well, we see the new account. Yeah. Yes. It, it, yes. The question is what citizen group is going to be, have oversight over that, the fund. <clears throat> if it becomes separate... <clears throat> If it becomes separate, the Civic Events Advisory Board will just see the Civic Events Advisory Board accounts. We'll just, we'll just see our account, but yes. That's the way is, I understand the it. The question yes. is who will get to oversee the hotel occupancy tax? I do not know that. I would presume it would be somebody in the accounting department. That's not a I think their, their concern is the, the citizen group. It's a question we need to ask. Yeah, we okay. We I mean, can find out. show up here, I mean... I don't account. see why it would. I mean, it probably wouldn't <clears throat> be a separate page. I mean, we, we could show that, but it wouldn't necessarily be this board that would have oversight for those funds. Right. Because, see, when they, they have a committee that they go through all of the funds in the Blue Book prior to it being published to us. So I would assume it would have its own, own uh, fund, whatever that number is, and whether or not we would be even, I don't even know if I would be allowed to look at it. I mean, I can look at it online, but I don't know that they, that they would give me any oversight to it. Okay. I just, I'd like to ask if, if that's under our, under our scope to ask. If not, we can go. We do, we do need to ask that question. We can ask. Okay. I just see that being a... <clears throat> a question down right. the road. Right. You want to see what total dollars come in yeah. and the allocation. You'd like to see we'll fund 410 and then XXX fund that is a hotel occupancy tax also. Right. But it, right. Okay. But it is a question, is the Civic Events Advisory Board, should they have oversight for the okay. overall hotel occupancy tax fund? I can find out for you. It's, I'm not sure that they should. That was always my concern. I think that is one of the downfalls to separating is we will no longer have oversight over that fund balance um, for the overall hotel occupancy tax dollars. I this think it'll be separated, therefore it will not be under our government. We're just going to get our, we're just going to see our portion. Right. So whatever Don or Civic Events has saved at the end of the year, we will have oversight on that, but we will not see the total, the total bottom line. But it line. should be public knowledge if it was to be yeah. asked, correct? We don't, we okay. don't argue with that. It almost sounds like they would need to go against what they're trying to do is condense boards and have another board to for there oversight. May be an existing, there may be an existing oversight board that could do that. We just need to ask, ask the question. Yeah, just ask the question. Okay. We'll have to see what they say. <laughs> and we'll just go from there. Thanks, Carl, for wording that properly for us. <laughs> Let's make sure that we report back what we find out at the next board meeting. You want it at the next board meeting, or you want me to send y'all an email? What would y'all prefer? Let's so bring it at the next board yeah. meeting. That's, okay. That way, if we have any questions, we can that just way it's we'll do. record it. All right. Anything else? No, thank you very much. And and I just want to say on a personal I know you've been through some, some difficult times, man, and I, and I keep seeing you coming to work. We I just wanted to say I appreciate you. your I service appreciate and that. the things that thank you've you. gone through, okay? Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Don. Um, all right, so do I have a motion to um, accept the financials for March 31st? So moved. 
Do I hear a second? Second. Any dis further discussions on, on the fund balance? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. All right. That passes. Let's move on to um, Lori. I think you're coming up next. Good morning, Lori Davila. Um, what you have in your packet was adjusted just a little bit. There was a few things that were added. Um, right now, what you see, we have 95 activities that are booked on the calendar for May. May is kind of a busy month for us. Um, I just booked a uh, concrete pavilion this morning for the 29th, so it only leaves the 31st with no activity on it at all. Um, we've got four big ticketed concerts coming up, two at the Coliseum, two at the River Stage, and then we've got five paid events throughout uh, Paseo and three at the Coliseum and one at the Convention Center. There's 27 um, City of San Angelo events that are not charged on the calendar. We usually average anywhere from 32 to 35 a month. Um, there's a lot of short notice events. There may be an extra meeting because of the elections, uh, depending if there's a runoff as well on that for a public. Um, we've got four graduation uh, ceremonies, uh, the Howard College, Lakeview, Cristobal ISD, this is their third year to come to San Angelo, and then we have Concha Valley uh, Council of Governments also has their um, Law Enforcement Academy graduation each May, and it's here again as well. Um, 29 private bookings, and there's three band concerts at the River Stage that are free for the public. Any questions? You do, you do a lot of juggling. Oh, I you know, do, yeah. It's kind of like the doctor's office. <laughs> yeah. Good deal. All right. Um, I know this has been asked before, and I'll just ask again. All of the City of San Angelo events that are not paid, mm -hmm. how is this department reimbursed for that time and space? And It's just like this meeting here. We used to have 24 board meetings, but they're not all recorded any longer, so they meet at their facility, so it kind of brought it down to about 18. But other than that, unless they order coffee, that's all they pay for. Yeah, I'm just throwing it out there just so it's brought up. Back in the day, they used to be charged $25 a meeting, just like the civic rate, but because everything has to be recorded, I think they are required to come here because of that. When we start talking budgets, is that still brought up ever? Not on my end. I just book it. So. <laughs> like a practical, sounds like a practical argument. We've discussed it internal, but I, I agree with you. You know, it's something that needed to be brought up. Well, just, you know, it's a, you've got to cover cost, even if it's just the city. So this department, to me, it's just one of those things to have out there that for budget concerns and I agree I'll, I'll bring up I actually when I was in this department I brought that up as well and and the response was we get to utilize legal we get to utilize um, city management we utilize a lot of other things at City Hall that we are not paying for mm -hmm. was the response so I guess the question Don do we pay an indirect cost back I don't know if Don's listening <clears throat> Don, are, are we currently paying an indirect cost back to the general fund? Yes, sir. We are? Yes, sir. Okay. So that covers that cost. So there's there's the argument. So I'm with you. I'm just. There, it's currently just a few hundred dollars shy of 100000 a year. So we're being transferred hot funds, and we're turning around and paying almost $100,000 in indirect costs back to the general fund. Okay. Or ammo for your argument, but well, I, I'm with you. I agree with you totally. I think it should be, yeah, as you put it, just ammo to have out there. And because if we're going to try to make this this department at least break even, that's just one of those things that, I mean, if you're averaging 32 to 35 meetings here a month, your payroll and utilities is... If anything, decreasing that indirect cost transfer would be ideal. It's my understanding that that figure would stand for, I believe, three physical years, and then it would be reviewed and could go up or down or stay the same. 
I don't know if that's still the same policy. That's what I was told. And if I'm not mistaken, I, I believe, is it 17? Is 17 the third year, the fiscal year we're in, or is it going to be 18? I think it's 18. 18. After 18, then it could possibly change. Maybe we need light money for the lights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Turn off the lights on us. We're not paying the bills. <laughs> they heard us talking about it. <laughs> I mean, there, there is an indirect cost study that is done by the finance office, yeah. but in, on the flip side, there's not one done that's over here to determine staff cost and utilities and, and such that you guys are paying for. So um, if anything, I, my opinion would be to reduce that indirect cost to um, more show, I guess, the, the uh, in-kind trade, if, if you want to classified as something that you guys offer to them and in turn they offer legal and management and such. Yeah. I, I think we're starting to get into a separate discussion item. I, probably. Yeah, we really are. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's bring it back. Keep food for thought. All right. Back to back to the calendar. Do you have anything else, Lori? I appreciate Mike. you. Mike. All right. Uh, if, if I could entertain a motion to pass the uh, calendar for May. I don't think you need to take action. We don't on that, do we? Okay, you're absolutely right. All right. That was just all usually part of the consent agenda. Let me get back. All right, so we're to uh, consideration of future agenda items. No, I'm sorry. We got, you're absolutely right. Update of civic events facilities improvement projects. I'm short, so you skipped me, didn't see no, me. No, you're right. You're <laughs> absolutely right. You're absolutely right. You know, this. I, I wanted to do this kind of new because I felt like it would be good for us to discuss these kind of things sure. and ask some questions and, and get some, some feedback. And so I'm Steve Kallenbach, and I'm the Civic Events Assistant Manager. And um, there's uh, a couple things that we wanted to talk about. We um, had a position open. We've had it open since September of last year and the passing of one of our, our employees. And uh, so we received 47 applications for the position, and we've chosen uh, Fernando uh, Mendez, who's one of our part-timers currently. So he's already going to step in and already know everything that's going on. So uh, his uh, full-time will start on Monday. So we finally filled that position. So um, the roofing of the McNeese Convention Center. I just talked with Jeremy just during the meeting here, and um, he, they got the contract yesterday from Duralast, and so he says it'll be, uh, he's got to get back up there and measure everything to make sure of everything that's going on. And then he's going to uh, order the materials. He said that'll take about a month to get everything here. And then once they start, he's, he estimates between two and three weeks to be completed. So um, they did do the scope of the um, drains up there or tried to. It's clogged. Um, we don't know. It, it's, it looks like it might be something that was done during renovation or whatever so they didn't probe in because if they open that up and before they're ready to do the roof we might have even more problems inside so once they get here and they start tearing the roof off going to take a closer look at it and see what's going on and then determine what they're going to do with the drains um, the coliseum the uh, doors we were having done on the back doors we've been going back and forth between a contractor that came in with the lowest bid and with finance or I mean with accounting and um, the um, requirements that he has are not going to meet the requirements he's not going to be able to get the um, workman's comp that he needs to be able to work in there so now we're kind of back to square one and I've got the, the bids from before so we're going to look at those and maybe get a third uh, contractor to come in and bid that so um, the other thing out there is the ceiling tile. We waited until after rodeo. We knew we were going to get the funds, but we wanted to wait until after rodeo and all the dirt was gone and everything. So now that we've been over 90 days out from that, I've got to get the contractors, the three that I had before, to come back in and give me an updated bid on those. And then we'll start that. And that's about it. Unless there's any questions. Any questions, please? Thank you, Steve. Yeah, and we, we're also, we already got funds for that, right? Yeah, we got the funds for the farmer's market to do, to repave that and everything. And uh, so we're going to wait. Yeah, it's going to, we're going to wait till 2018 to do that. So. Any other questions? No, any other questions? Thank you, Steve.
<clears throat> We're ready. Okay. Um, on consideration of future agenda items, two meetings ago, we 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 had a, a motion that we ended up tabling on the um, uh, getting a fund set up for Sid to promote, and, and I and, it, and I thought about this. Um, maybe what we need to do is is the 410. Hot, oh, the hot tax, I'm sorry, not the 410, but the hot taxes, there's rules set out out there, correct? And I think, you know, when we were discussing whether or not we should pass that, and I'm not really specific talking about that item in particular, but I think we should do a review of the hot tax so that if we ever have to um, uh, make a decision, we're a little bit familiar with the rules. So if you could bring bring us a set of rules next time, and let's go over over those items on what's allowed, what's not allowed, just so that we're a little bit more abreast of what's going on. Will do. All right. Other than that, if you don't have anything else, motion to adjourn. You want to add something about the? Um, okay. Yeah, I was sorry, my bad. A couple of, if you don't mind, um, a couple of items. Obviously, I love Michaela's idea. I think we do need to discuss um, how much the financial impact of what you guys do to offer services to the rest of the city. Flip side, like I said, it's almost essentially putting together your own indirect cost plan. You know, what are you guys providing for free? What would you charge the general public for those same type services? So I think it'd be nice to see some sort of an analysis that we could possibly, I don't know, maybe take to council, take city meeting. Um, another item that I would like to discuss would be uh, the ticketing that we currently have. Um, as well as what what may come up in the future if we're going out for bids, contract dates, you know, just give us kind of a rough um, summary of where we're at and what, maybe what we're looking at doing. Will do. That's all I had. Anybody else? Motion to adjourn. Second. All, right. all in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Thank you.